hi welcome to a new vlog how are you guys doing um my name is kinyere just in case you are seeing my face for the first time i just wanted to just quickly like run you guys through what the vlog is about um there were a lot of amazing women on this campaign um Yabo Ojo was on the campaign, Patience Zoko was on the campaign, Masura Isa, Tito Idakula, Toby, who I met, um, Iene, who watches my channel and I met her. She was like, Oh, we've started before. So I had to go to my DMs and then I saw that we had actually, you know, had a few conversations. So it was just this amazing time that I spent with these amazing women. And if not that I was there for work, it was it's a bit difficult when you're experiencing life and doing your enjoying moments and then you have to walk because it's a bit difficult to kind of whip out the camera when you don't have someone that's standing by to do all of that for you so it was it was a bit tough you know doing that but i tried as much as i could to get as much footage as i could to give you guys the behind the scenes on what this campaign was about and it's just such a blessing to be in a space with other mothers like you mothers from different walks of life mothers from different tribes mothers you know with different um experiences when it comes to motherhood is it was such a blessing and we just sat down and we had a discussion like before we went on set we were you know just chit chatting and tito literally like did a short therapy session for me because i mentioned um I mentioned my dad's death and you know we just had like a short therapy session we had like a round table discussion where we just talked about a few moments from you know our mothering experiences and all of that so i hope you guys enjoy um this video i just really wanted to do this intro just so that you're not too lost because i didn't really do an intro for the campaign on the morning of the campaign so i just wanted to do this so that i give you guys an insight into what this vlog is about before you go into it so thank you to everybody that made this possible thank you to my husband and we finished shooting by 11 p.m so we had to start coming back home by 11 p.m even though we're offered um you know a hotel but because it wasn't something that we planned that which i wish we had in fact i mean as parents i think you're looking for every little excuse to get away so i wish that was mentioned to us before we got there because i would have packaged my children very well but because it wasn't planned out and there was school the next day so we couldn't do that so we had to leave um the island by 11 pm like past 11 we got home by like 12 past 12, so um freedom ready to wear um jola everybody that i met on set i am really appreciative and i just really enjoy the experience so yeah cheers to bigger campaigns cheers to bigger experiences cheers to meeting a lot more amazing women i can't tell you guys how emotional i get when i think of how far this vlogging journey has gotten me and the amazing women i've gotten to meet the amazing women i've gotten to be friends with the amazing women that i've gotten to share my experiences with share their experiences as well like it's just been a wild ride okay thanks to my mom as well my mom was there calling to make sure my girls were fine um thanks to my help monica she was good okay um the lady that helps me stay to 7 p.m she usually goes home by 6 p.m but she stayed to 7 p.m and then she called me i was like oh madam can i go i didn't want to keep her because i mean she has a home herself so i had to let her go so monica picked up from there um, did everything she was supposed to do got the girls to bed like she cooked um, I don't know how the food tasted but she cooked served the girls um, the girls had dinner and at some point I couldn't reach out to them because her phone had gone off the gym was on but her phone wasn't going through Grace's phone I think was charging my room and they had gone to bed so I was a bit worried and I was trying to call them like for such a long time it wasn't going through my mom was calling me have you reached out to them should I start going to your house and it was late like past nine I'm like you know what don't worry I believe that everything is fine I home and then knocked that she was already in the living room so everything just went so good that day i just want to thank every single person that was involved in making that day go as smooth as it did for me thank you guys so much i love you from the bottom of my heart uh let's let's get into the vlog okay let's get into the vlog Have you really gone? 
Kwe ni Kui. Um, I'm working on a campaign with Cadbury Bon Vita. So I just got there now. I'm going to show you guys what the behind the scenes is like. The, I mean, this vlog you guys are going to see probably around Mother's Day because the campaign is geared towards Mother's Day. Since we're not supposed to wear makeup, so that's why I was able to leave my house early. Thankfully, thank God, save that we didn't wear makeup. So we left home by 10 o'clock, and it is it is 12:52. Traffic. progress yeah. it's so so significant how mm -hmm. you went from the blue walls to yeah. very lovely interior mm -hmm. beautiful oh, yeah. i keep saying that when i'm looking for house in lagos the kitchen walls are mm -hmm. the one thing so when i saw those ones, i'm like ah yeah. i never seen a house with these walls but then you made the house look like the walls yeah. are not so bad now yeah not so bad ah <laughs> <laughs> i remember seeing those, huh, those walls one of the houses i was looking for mm -hmm. so I'm like no never Never yeah. ever. <laughs> what? <laughs> Transformation. Dress, <laughs> everything, hair, earrings. What? Oh gosh, thank you, thank you. Oh god. <laughs> but all of you are stunning. You know, to my fellow stunning sisters. What can we say? This is oh, the love. The love is the love. Oh, thank you for making us so beautiful, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I like them. So basically, I think firstly, I think one of the biggest challenges people face is not being able to talk. Yeah. Not feeling like you can't be heard. Yeah, I'm not feeling alone. Feeling in your, alone. In your, in your, in your challenges. Yeah. Not that most difficult oh, things. Okay. And that was kind of one of our main things. You are not alone. You don't have to feel alone. And then also, not only feeling alone, but not feeling safe enough to share with others. Yeah. So we created this safe place where, you know, the great thing about Telegram is that you don't actually have to know anybody's phone number, yeah. number or anything. So there's a level of privacy there. Yeah. So when you're talking to a group of women, some of them have been through what you've been through, you feel safe. Then what then happens is that because we've created a community of sorts, sometimes when somebody identifies your story, then they're like, you know what, send me a personal message. And then they start supporting each other as a result. Beyond that, there's, I'm a counselor. So, yeah, that's my bad <laughs> Beyond that, I'm a counselor, so I also offer like counseling support if we really need it. And then there are people I also partner with that offer free counseling support. So, Regardless of what it is, there's always some kind of help available to you. Unfortunately, there's only so much you can do based on how, what you share with us. Yeah. Right? So we can't exactly go to your house and say, pack your load and yeah. leave. Except maybe you say, I want to leave and then maybe you and consider. And you encourage them to leave. No, 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 I'm ah, saying I can't do that. Like, like that's a choice. That's a choice, so like uh, for me to say leave, no, that's mm -hmm. not my place. I would never say that. So if the person wants to leave, you help. But if you, we, I mean, we will we'll help you assess your options. Do you want to leave? Do you want to? Is this the right thing for you? And then, your, if the, but ultimately, I think that's the great thing about counseling. The choice is the client's own. It's never yeah. your your. But you said something while somebody yeah. was here, like you're a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So would you advise? Well, we all know what the Bible says. And if the person comes and says, yes, I want to leave, what would you do? Your it's your choice. It's still, I think choice. it's still her choice. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't impose my choice on you. Look at the amazing thing even about Christianity is that it's a choice. To accept Christ okay. is a choice. Mm -hmm. To accept God is a choice. Like, even Jesus does not impose himself on you. 
So no matter what it is, the ultimate thing is a choice. Because guess what? If you tell somebody what to do and they are not on board, it will still come back. Mm-hmm. But if they own their choice and they say, I made the choice, they can stand at their choice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So no matter what it is, it's mm-hmm. your choice. But I'll present yeah. you the options. Mm-hmm. I'll ask you, what are your different alternatives? If you do this, what will happen? Mm-hmm. If you do this, what will happen? So you make your own choice. But for me to say, do this, mm-hmm. no. I mean, of course, as a Christian, if, for example, it, we do abusive relationship for me, but just normal couple dilemma. Mm-hmm. As a Christian, I can try to help you, guide you on, okay, this is what we think about marriage, what do you mm-hmm. think is their space? Mm-hmm. And then one of my favorite people is probably Secret Place Wife. Yeah. She's, a, she's a counselor. So when it comes to that kind of marriage stuff, I refer them to her. Go and talk to her because she's a marriage counselor. And sometimes you realize that what you think is your husband's problem mm-hmm. might sometimes be problem. you mm-hmm. because you just have your own personal issues that you're trying to put on your on your on your partner. Mm-hmm. So there, there are so many angles to it that that's why you can never be the one to tell somebody what mm-hmm. to do. Yeah. Because and remember, people only tell you what they want to tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you don't even know the full, the full story. story. So if you're giving mm-hmm. advice based on your assumptions, yeah. it most likely won't work. So yeah. I'll tell them it's your choice, but these are the, and I'll help them just consider their options. And the other thing is that when people come, they've not thought about their options. They're just in the moment. They're just overwhelmed. Yeah, it's that I my feelings are hurt. I'm emotional. So you know, wait, let's calm down. Let's look at this situation. Mm-hmm. Let's look at the options. Let's look mm-hmm. at the solutions. What do you want to do? Yeah. So yeah. So that's kind of how it works. Do you, talk, do you get stuck to your partners? In some I, 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 so what I always say this though: marriage counseling is not my favorite thing. Okay. So the thing about it, I don't like marriage counseling because I feel like when a woman comes to me, I only hear one side of the conversation. So that's part of why until maybe I I get to talk to the husband, I can't really say anything because they will not tell you what, they they won't tell you everything. So when I now realize that there's a partner part, I honestly, personally, I I, I refer them to either um, or international counseling center because those ones they they can handle marriage i'm more about emotional healing healing from your own personal wounds finding who you are as a person loving yourself knowing who you are those are things i i care about when you know who you are when you get to love yourself then we cannot talk about the other person involved because sometimes if you don't even know who you are the other person will continue to control you so before i get to the partner i deal with you <laughs> so yeah I think I've said everything. Any more questions? I'm trying not to bang the camera. Tito is being a wild guy. You are used to this life. I don't know. I have my name. I'm a mom, a YouTuber, a content creator, and I just want to tell all mothers out there that you're strong, you're beautiful, and you are more than enough. Tell us about your journey to motherhood. Now that you say that, I'm just like, okay. My journey to mother. Because I was in school, I was in my final year in school, so um, I was really just living off people's experiences from people, experiences from other people. Mistake. I had a more um, exciting experience with my second baby because I had lost a pregnancy before I got pregnant. In between the four years, we lost a baby, so she came in, she was a rainbow baby, so it was really exciting. Motherhood to me is growth. It exposes you to a lot more about yourself that you didn't even know. The society has placed us in a place where sometimes we feel like we're not doing enough or this mother is doing better, but I just wanted to know that there's no one way to raise a child. Maybe you should, you probably, not maybe, you probably just moderate, just I'm moderating the panel. No, it's not a, mo- it's not a panel. It's just <laughs> like sharing. Shock. No, I don't, I'm just. People just need to share your experiences. Yeah. So I'm not the one moderating it, yeah. But you would be like the one. discussion. Yeah. Wow, you guys are just telling me this information. No, I, I just remember that you're the therapist. Are you guys joking? Ah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. Right? That's true. Come on. That's... Wow. 
Oh, I feel like I'm doing like this. Trash. <laughs> trash. Oh, trash. It's better than I have to pay your money. Ah. These people telling me I'm most racist, something they did not tell me about before. I think that's why my head started aching. <laughs> Legit. I hope I was water. as fine. I hope I was as fine as Tito in this view because me, I don't understand. Can someone help me get water, please? It didn't look like I was this cute. No, I hope you can't impose your face on me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what you didn't get for yourself? <laughs> Oh, well, this night, um, but I really like the way you answer. You're so concise. I like the part that you talk about labor. It was so funny because you're so yeah. honest. Oh, like, and then I was laughing because I've had four different labor experiences, and my last mm. one was actually I didn't have like it was a painless labor. Mm. Yeah, I got to the hospital like within like 30 minutes. Yeah, already. Yeah, mm. and it was it. Well, lucky. So he said, I was like, actually, I've experienced it, and it's the most mm. beautiful thing. Are we good? It's such a nice picture. Sure, make up. Just check, check it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or somebody just. Did you guys discuss about this? Just like. Okay, okay, I guess. Thank you. So my, my first week here, and I remember dinner saying, just take care of it. Take care of it. I'm not going to try to introduce. I'm just going to let everybody introduce themselves because I can't do the honors. So going with you, Mommy. Patience also was my name. And my fans call me Mama G. Mama G. Oh, my name is Yabo Jo. And um, my name is Mansura Isa from the North. <laughs> from the North. And yeah. I'm Shinyere Avan. As everybody, and we're just talking about motherhood. And we already, we're having some interesting conversations. <laughs> we're talking about breast en engorgement and how, you know, the engorgement process when you're trying to wean your children or when you just had a baby. Mm, my mother, you know, she brought alcohol mixed with some leaves, I don't know. She just said, rub it on it every morning and at night before you go to bed. So I did it for my first child. My second child, it didn't work. I was really sick, so I had to go to the hospital. I was talking about cabbage leaves. Were you talking about cold water? Cold water, yes. That, that's what I use, actually. And it happens that I had a visitor, and she came and saw me so sick. My breasts were like, you know, and she told me, you know, you could have used cold water, and everything would just come out. And I told her, it's like, she told me, try it. And immediately I saw the cold water. I touched it, and I touched my breast with it. and. I'm telling you, the water started dripping out, and I was happy. But then I also feel um, is engorgement more painful when you have a child that is constantly sucking? Because you know how we have mm -hmm. your breast comes out based on demand, yeah. so you supply more when your child demands more. Yeah. So maybe if a child is not sucking very often, you don't have so much, you don't produce so much milk. So it's not as full so as it's not as full as some mm -hmm. other. So I guess maybe it's to be different with. Yeah, but I guess the point is, the, is also what you were saying about like you know even when you stop, even when you're so, you when you're feeling less, there's a point when your breasts are full before you realize that ah no baby is taking this thing and then it just. It it's like stone. It's yes, hard, it's hard, hard. Yes. and hard. heavy. Yes. So you're like literally lifting the breast. And if you don't like, you'll be able to move your yeah, neck, yes. with your hands. Your you'll hands be able to. Like, so you'll be doing yeah, like but, this. But another thing, what do they call mastitis? There's something that's yeah, like so an infection that, as well. that yeah. comes with engorgement. Yeah. I think. That I think that's where the pain starts. Yeah. Yes. yeah. My thought could be stopped sucking at two and a half months. Wow. It, it became on its on its own, and we tried to find out why. Guys, so it is 12 30. I'm just getting home. I'm tired and I have a headache because I ate late. And thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much to everybody. You know, the full crew, the team, Jola, thank you so much. The Cadbury, Bon Vita, thank you guys so much. Um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Now I am here. Myself.